Allow me for a few moments this morning to reflect upon the readings of Scripture under the heading, Do Church Be the Church? Do Church Be the Church? Have you ever thought of the word church as both a noun and a verb? I suspect that for most, if not indeed all, or myself, church is a place. It is where we come to live out the experience of worshiping our God when we need to each week. And we gather not just on Sunday morning, but also on the occasional Sunday afternoon or evening as we are called to celebrate or commemorate special celebrations and supportive services in worship as many additional times a year as we need. And we, are, we spend a lot of hours here during the week as well to serve God faithfully. But to both worship and to give are also to be church. It's an identity thing to live out the church by being who we are, knowing who we are, and following the teachings of Christ. It's how we define what it means to be a faithful follower and giver in God's world. Of course, we are also called here in times of grief to pay tribute to loved ones we've lost, to thank God for their life and to say goodbye and to give them back to God. We support one another in such times as the church. We are called to celebrate love in marriage or in recognition of love between two people in order to ask God's blessing. We baptize to, to declare that you are a part of God's family. God has called you here. You are blessed by God's grace. As one who seeks to receive that welcome, maybe we also have ourselves cleansed by a call to accept anyone who wants to be in this space of God's love. We also declare that welcome when we receive each other by a profession of faith, or when we recall our baptiz baptismal promises at confirmation. We welcome and receive new people in our midst, even if we sometimes measure the amount of commitment we give. And oftentimes, I've experienced this in all my years as a United Church person, sometimes we measure how much we give, what, what commitment we give, and, and how we label what we give. We, as United Church people, have learned to organize and manage in the way of our Presbyterian forebears, gather in community, communities, boards, and teams to do the decision-making of the church because we believe the Holy Spirit grants us time for conversations, time for meetings, in order to make plans and to organize and implement them. That's a part of who we are. Maybe we even do so during a time of frank conversation, or as we might say, through the odd racket. Sometimes we have the odd racket to hash things out. We open our calendars, even in our retirements, or even as junior high students nowadays, we have planning books and calendars, data, date books or smartphone calendars. We continue to find ways to live out the continuous spreading of the good news of Christ into the future in our own lives. We make time for this. We make a commitment to serve our church many, many times during our week. And hopefully, we laugh and giggle sometimes. And when we do, it's like God smiling upon us and saying, there you go. Don't take yourselves too seriously. Remember to laugh. Keep on loving one another. What we do is about ecclesiology in action, living out in practical terms the study of the church, doing what we do, that includes what we do in this place, but also what we do in the wider community and the world. We know that church is not just a place. Church is us gathered together in God's love. We pray for many blessed are you moments in our lives, happy are you moments in our lives. And at the same time, perhaps we might ask the question from time to time, blessed also are who? Like the Beatitudes of Matthew chapter 5, we recall how blessed we are and when we are. And each time that we are, we live out the goodness that God gives us. 
Perhaps it is not out of reason from time to time and in the life of creation that we ought to ask the question, in a world where there is hurting and harm and decision making, blessed are who? When in mourning or sadness or persecution, Jesus teaches that we continue to be blessed. But even in difficult times, we dig deeply within ourselves and dig deeply in caring for one another so that we might continue to know that God is still loving us, always. But when the prophet Micah prophesies a conversation between God and God's people during a time when Israel is under the conquest of the Assyrian Empire, Israel, in that time, is more or less a conduit of power between surrounding military powers of the era and Jerusalem. So, in biblical, biblical times, we might ask, blessed are who? God's people of the Old Testament are not just living to serve God, but also by ge geopolitical consequence, living to serve other nations as well. Again, blessed are who? Jesus preaches the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes during a time of Roman imperial oppression causing terrible and hate-filled persecution of followers among Jews and new would-be Christians. Blessed are who? Just hours ago, we saw on the news video for the first time of a 29-year-old Memphis black motorist, Tyree Nichols, get brutally beaten by four police officers, all of whom are black. And that was my first time seeing it on the news. For many of us, it was the first time seeing it. And usually, in my experience, p police brutality is a war of racism or ethnic difference. But this one puzzles me. Who now is the oppressed and the oppressor? What's going on here? Blessed is who? Where is the power here? Is one who is blessed one who has power? More graves of indigenous children are being found at former residential school sites in the recent days. We know how they got there. Elders are telling us voices call out from the graves. They finally found us. Now they know that we are, they finally know that we are here. Blessed are who? If there is any reason to call ourselves blessed, maybe it is because we see each other face to face, accept our sins of the past, relinquish our power, tell our story, listen to stories, change our ways, accept our sins of the past, relinquish our power that has all too often been by too few of us, power that has been abused in the, present, in the past, at unchecked, say, hockey organizations or athletic clubs, and say, not just we are sorry, but also we can do better than this. We can change our ways. Teach us to do better. Or perhaps even still, we, the oppressed, are now going to teach you, oppressor, how to be better. Now you will finally listen to us. Blessed are you? No, blessed are who? Friends, as the body of Christ, the communion of saints, the community of the church, we know that the only way that all are going to experience God's blessing is for all to learn that we are called to love one another. That means the way of changing the way the world is, the world is organized, the way we operate, the way we or, uh, relate to one another. That's what it means to experience the church as both verb and noun. We learn to love one another. American Franciscan priest and teacher Richard Rohr, adapted from Jesus' plan for the new world, writes these words. The eight Beatitudes from Matthew 5, 3 to 12, offer us a more spacious world, a, where, a world where I do not have to explain everything, fix everything, or control anything beyond myself. 
a world where we can allow a larger mystery to work itself out through us and in us. These things are done to us more than anything we can do. The Beatitudes are about changing me, not changing other people. Wonderfully, it is not about being right anymore. Who can fully do the Beatitudes right? It is about being in right relationship, which is a very different agenda. The Beatitudes are about learning to be in right relationship. The prophet Micah demands God's justice for God's people. And in learning from these sacred teachings and teachers, we learn what it means to, to both do church and be church. It's a process. It's a journey. It's a path we take. But we agree as people of the church to keep on learning. We keep on learning to more and more love one another. Friends, continue to do as we do here at Emmanuel United Church. Keep learning and loving. And as we do, may God go with us. May Christ keep teaching us. May the Holy Spirit keep inspiring us to be doing and being a people for the church, for justice and love. Thanks be to God.